you're in ignorance. Uh, you know, it's just, and then I was reading, you know, like reading Ramakant Maharaj when, it, I mean, I was touched. I mean, not as badly as I would have been in the past, but I mean, it kind of, wow, you know, I was a little upset, not a, angry, or ups, but just basically upset, you know, and so well, I felt it's a very unfair thing like that. You mean, yeah. that's hard not to get hooked into. Well, I was upset, you know, like, and, and so I took the, I mean, I, I felt the touch. And then, you know, like I was reading Rama Kant yesterday and he was talking about, uh, you know, these masters, you know, one has diabetes, one has what, uh, tuberculosis, one has cancer. <laughs> and they just totally, you know, I mean, it's just the body, you know, and they totally uh, uh, remove from it. They're not taking the touch of it. So I was just wondering, you know, like, man, what does it take to really be <laughs> in that place where you don't take the touch? I mean, don't take the touch. I don't, you know, like, um, you know, basically, uh, that's just the way it is. But anyway, you know, I, I did work with it. And, uh, you know, but it, it just showed me that there's still a somebody there you know, there's still, uh, well, but yeah. you're not dead. Yeah. You're not dead. So it's not taking the touch. Taking the touch is continuously replaying it. Like dogs are barking. Now dogs are barking in the mind. Dogs yeah. are barking. Yeah. But if, if something like this happens, it's natural to be like, Oh, a little bit, you know? Yeah. yeah. It, and, and as long as it's not a, you know, a grasping thing, you're not a dead person. And if your house was to burn down in the moment it's burning, you're going to run out of the burning building. That's sure. going to be a natural reaction. And you'll probably be like, oh, oh, my house is burning. That doesn't mean anything at all about whether you're selfless self or not selfless self. It's the afterwards when you're sitting on the lawn and your mind starts to say, wow, your house just burned down. You lost all your possessions, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. That's the time. But like you're saying, you went to this lady's where she's getting her, uh, the car fixed and they say, Hey, by the way, Andrew, it's going to be $2,000. And you were thinking it was going to be a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's perfectly normal to be like, Oh, taken aback. As a matter of fact, in the illusion, this accident has occurred and now things must be happening. I, for my own self, I would say if it was $2,000, I'd be like, Hmm, you know, maybe I should be looking into, in our state at least, if I back into you in a parking lot, that's kind of a rough situation because parking lots are usually insurance companies say, you pay for your own damage, she pays for her own damage, and that's that. So, I mean, there's these things, but that's not taking the touch of like, oh, it's different yeah. to take the touch. Just it's like, cash, yeah. You know, somebody in your family dies, you're not just being like, oh, okay, somebody died, body's dead, no worries. There's a, there's a, there's a feeling of, oh, this person died. But then it's, you, there's a deeper knowing. But the surface yeah. reaction, as long as you're not identifying with it, allow it to come and go. Yeah, there's two things happening, you know, like basically, um, I mean, it's settled down quite a bit now. It's just, but it was like working with, you know, like um, it would come up again, you know, like, gee, we, you know, we just paid today. We had to get um, the pipes <laughs> in the house, you know, the, for the surge and that, for the water, you know, the washing machine and all that. That was three, um, 300, well, 3,500 for that. And then with this, I said, gee whiz, you know, <laughs> it was just, anyway. And I'm not doing as many weddings as I used to do. So basically, you know, like, so I'm working with all this. And uh, at the same time, you know, I'm really uh, doing the mantra. I'm really reflecting on what the teaching is about. And I have to say, it really helped me a great deal. Uh, every now and then it would kind of come up, but now it's just about totally gone. And I'm, you know, like, and then finally this lady called today around two o'clock. She said, you know, I'm going to take it to another place. See if I can get a, a better estimate on a cheaper estimate for you. So yeah. anyway. Yeah. And that's, again, yeah. she's going to call and get a different estimate. Okay. Yeah. Drank that and put it down. Not thinking about that until she right. calls and says, hey, exactly. you think yeah. such and such a place. Yeah. Right. But yeah, never, never, because you can cre create a sense of doership by beating yourself up about not remaining as the selfless self. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you put your hand on a hot stove and you pull away. These are just natural reactions. 
But you know, in a deeper sense, it's just like in your dream. If somebody came up and slapped you in your dream, you'd probably react. It's the same. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a knowingness that all this is occurring inside consciousness that's appearing to you. But nonetheless, these appearances are appearing. You're not yeah. getting so involved in them, but you are like, oh, this is happening. It's not happening at the deepest level. But at the, in the moment, I'm thirsty. I don't just say, well, you know, it's all a dream, and I don't need to worry about thirst. And then as the thirst continues in the body, I say, no, 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 I'm good. I don't need to. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try to see how long. I, because then that's the I am somebody else wheels turning. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, that's right. No, that really makes a lot of sense, you know, <clears throat> and um, because I know in the saga, I think used to get angry with people. I mean, he threw people out of his, his room. <laughs> 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 I, I know a lady who actually went to see him and he threw her out <laughs> <laughs> years ago. Uh, and, you know, like, uh, so, yeah, I, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's just, you know, the, the carrying it around, that's, that's when you carry that around right. with you, that's, that's the whole issue, I guess. That's exactly. The, taking the touch, yeah. Just like Ramakant Maharaj, somebody asked him about something blue, and he kind of got irritated. You could tell in the tape, he's like, what are you talking about, blue Krishna, blue this? Because the guy was like, well, what about blue? And when you see the color blue, and what was blue Krishna? And then he mentioned it the next day as well as kind of not carrying it over, but Listen, these silly kind of things, you should be out of this. Right. You know, for him, it wasn't, I'm angry with you for saying silly questions. He's just kind of saying, listen, don't, you know, because every question is just your disbelief in yourself being the selfless self. So every question that's coming is absolute nonsense, but you have to see it as nonsense and say, oh, I, if I didn't have a body, how could this question arise? So just like you said, Nisargadatta is like, hey, get out, you know, I, because some people might come in and say, oh, you know, this is happening in my life, or a lot of times too, especially in reading those books, people come in and they really think, I know Gita, I can, I can read Gita backwards and forwards, and I know the Vedas and this and that, and he'd always be like, listen, I don't know, I, I don't need to know this thing, know yourself, and then all these things are added on to you. Remain with that I am, that sense of presence. Forget about all this stuff. You can sit there and debate intellectually, and like Ramakant Maharaj says, on your deathbed, how is this helping you? That you can repeat the Vedas backwards and forwards and the, the Bhagavad Gita and explain and, and, and discuss it for hours. It's, it, like you said, it's not a master of philosophy. It's, the, it's a master that you are that selfless self. <clears throat> I would think that, um, well, I, I, I don't always, certainly don't always have selfless, selfless self as being aware in the background, but uh, I, I would think that uh, the more- Well, you do, but you're just not paying attention to that. You're paying attention to the illusory something that happens to be passing. You do always have selfless self. It is always with you. You can't lose that. Yeah, I mean, it seems I'm not aware of it, though. Um, exactly, because you're paying attention to illusory passing things that don't matter at all, but in your mind, you're creating the fact that they might matter. Yeah. And like, uh, sometimes I'll, I feel like I'm getting con the conviction, and then I, and then I start to look at, uh, it, it doesn't feel like it uh, totally sinks in, but it, or it does, it does, but then I, I'm like, I question it or whatever. <laughs> Well, remember the word spontaneous. It's not thinking about conviction. It's spontaneous conviction, right. meaning that if thoughts are trying to arise, you just kind of skirty them away by remaining with yourself with self. The spontaneous conviction is so that I. So anything that's occurring is that so that I. It's occurring to the so that I, which it can't be occurring to so that I. Therefore, it's illusory and passing. And you remain with the sense of presence, which is so that I. And every time you think about thinking, just know that thinking is a total and complete waste of your time. 
unless you're like tallying something with a calculator or, you know, like you were saying about your roof, there's some thinking that's involved in that. Which one of these estimates is the best one based on the price and the length of time that the person's in the business? Because I don't want to put somebody on the roof and they only remain there for a couple of days and then they're gone and my roof is half fixed and half not fixed. So these are the things you'd think about in comparing estimates. You're using the mind, but in the true, again, the background of all this activity is the selfless self, which you are in all those different various forms, the formlessness. And you can never not be formless, even though you're pretending and thinking that you might be with form, you are not. So it's very easy in this way. Anything that has to do with form, you are not. And as you believe impression and continue to impress this, your seeing of this belief, because see, you really are the selfless self, but you're pretending to be Keith and you're seeing the world through Keith. But the more you start to acknowledge the fact that you're selfless self and Keith is an appearance on this illusory passing thing, then you'll start to see from your true position. That's why Maharaj says, your ideas and beliefs and concepts about yourself create your reality. Why? Because you are that. But when you're pretending to be Keith, limited to a body form in a form world, you just kind of pay attention to other things. But once you remain with your selfless self, this won't be happening. And then you can use this Keith as a, a character in the show to do what needs to be done in the moment. So even uh, in, in uh, Amrit Leia, in this uh, one page uh, 38, he says, uh, he talks about the, the fourth body. And uh, he says, he says uh, the one who, who perceives the oblivion, oblivion is the fourth body that is in the form of knowledge. I wonder if that is uh, comparable to what would be the watcher and then uh, and then the watcher eventually is going to leave also. Your great causal body is all of everything like space. So there's nothing that can be watched in space. You just know this space is the sense of I am, is the sense of presence. But there's no, that's it. There's, there's nothing in back of that. Like you can see that, okay, body, this gross body appears. And then you have the subtle body that's appearing. And you have the causal body which is kind of the ignorance and knowledge combined, so there's really nothing, but then there's the witness of this, that you are, that great causal body, which is the universe, basically, if you go backwards in that way, all of everything, space, space with objects moving in the space, and the gross body is an object moving in the space that you're perceiving. You're not thinking about this gross body in the space that you are moving around. Otherwise, that creates the subtle body of mind, ego, intellect. When you're identifying with this object in the space that you are as something and getting this train of thought in the subtle body, the great causal body is the witness of all of this. It's like this one can see all but cannot be seen by any of them because it's the reality. All these others are illusory layers on presence. So the fourth body of which he speaks is, is not the causal body, what you're talking about. The causal body is the void, yeah. is what's called the void. Great causal body is kind of, you don't want to say witness to the void, but is prior to the void. Like Maharaj says, prior to being this. Prior to the sense I am that appeared to that, that you are, that didn't know that you are until that sense of you are appeared. And that's the click. That's the click. And it, it, and just your, let's like your space in this room, completely active and completely intelligent. When you click with this body, suddenly you know you exist. Otherwise, you exist, but you had no understanding of existence because there was no instrument for which you would know your existence. So, if this space was like all intelligence and everything and clicked with the body, oh, I'm alive. How is that possible? You just know yourself. And because you know yourself in the body form, you, you're recognizing this. That's how this illusory world comes into view. 
and you start believing in this, but you're actually like the space and not, you're more subtle than space because you can perceive space. You're more subtle than the subtle sense of presence because you can perceive the subtle sense of presence. But you have to use this illusory body as an instrument to scoop into that. And that's the whole spirit clicked with the body. Spirit, let's say, is the air and the space in this room. It's completely intelligent. It's, it's all-knowing, but there's nothing to know. And then it clicks with a body form, and there's a knowingness that I exist. Prior to that, I didn't know I existed. Now I know I exist. When this body is no more, then this space that's super intelligent, all of everything which you are, is still there, but you have no object which was to know yourself. Would, would you say the click is comparable to taking the touch? No, no, no. Take, the click That's happens you, yeah. with the sense of existence. Then the illusory layers appear on that spontaneous presence, body, mind, ego, intellect, in a world where things are happening that I take the touch of things because I'm taking the touch first. I exist as this form that other things are taking the touch or that I have the ability to touch using senses and all this kind of stuff. But you're prior to all of that. That's why taking Maharaj the, says, just remain prior to being this. Taking the touch doesn't come in until you start conceptualizing. I suppose. Well, until you have to have something that can touch, that the senses are saying, okay, here I am in this body form and I'm touching this hand or I'm drinking this water and I happen to be in this world, and there are other forms that are moving about, which I start to believe are separate because I'm believing myself to be separate. So if I believe that I'm separate in this sense of existence, then I think that all the forms I'm seeing are also separate. And then I start to believe that I'm interacting with them as separate beings because I believe myself is separate, because I've taken the touch of this body form. So when the body... Uh goes away um do all the subtle bodies go away too well again all those bodies came with the body your sense of existence came first uh -huh. you'll no longer have the sense of existence so nothing really comes nothing really goes it's just again if you were to take the example of the space in this room being alive and this is not alive and the space in this room clicked with this body and said i but didn't understand that it's the space that's saying I, but I'm saying I through this instrument. So I believe it's I who says I as this body form. When this body form is no more, it doesn't, all the forms are created and destroyed inside of yourself and it doesn't matter. It's like you still are because you're that creative intelligence that all of everything that clicked with this body, that nothing, which then became something, and then we'll go back to nothing because it's nothing because it's everything and there's nothing other. Think about all the space in this room and this is a dead body form. And then this body form ceases functioning like a energizer bunny that runs out of batteries. Boom. But the energy that created the speaking and the listening and all that is still here. It's just no longer using this particular form to do any of the speaking or listening then this form just kind of melts and dissolves and goes back into the five elements and maybe creates another form down the road in the five elemental forms that are created. Not a created like a rebirth, but just a recycling of materials, the five elements that are continuously recycling, because that's all that there is in the physical realm. The gross body is made up of those elements. Yeah. And the physical, go ahead. I've heard it described that if there's unfinished energy, let's say, you know, <clears throat> the loop that they have that shows the, um, the energy circle, and it's un if it's unfinished, then it has to, uh, what do you call it? It has, all energy needs to complete itself. So if there's unfinished energies, like unfinished desires or things like that, that will be enough to propel another uh another body uh, but it's not it's not reincarnation because there's no entity there that gets that that goes from one life to the other that assumes there's no entity there, there's no soul that goes from one life to another but there is energy that reconstitutes if it's unfinished again in the formlessness this can't be 
The formless sense of presence is just all of everything everywhere. You sense the presence because it's in body form. How the world is spontaneously created, I don't know. That it's just, it's here. You know you are. That's the only thing. Then you forget about every, excuse me, everything else except the sense you are, the sense of existence, and you remain there. And then you stop thinking about the illusory world and you just remain with yourself. And as you continue to remain with yourself, you'll recognize that your position is now the witness of this presence, but not witnessing like witnessing as in it's sunny outside and you're witnessing the sun. It's not doing anything. You're not actively doing anything. Your eyes are open. You see the sun. So with this sense of presence, you're just, you are the sense of presence identifying as that. And then it turns back that, oh, I'm witnessing this presence. How am I witnessing this presence? How am I sensing this presence? I'm using this body form to sense this presence. And that's it. As far as extra energies and reincarnation and all that kind of stuff, bodies and, and forms are created and destroyed all the time. Ants, rabbits, people, birds, alligators, fish, all these forms are just being created because they're a line of all the fish are getting together and male, female fish, hello, boom, make a baby fish. Male, female rabbit, get together, make a lot of baby rabbits. Uh, male, female mouse gets together, makes another mouse. And that you are is what's moving and animating and breathing life into all things. Not really breathing life, but they can, you can call prana that active energy, that life force that's being breathed into these different various creatures and moving them around. And in a human being, then you have the sense of identification with this body form. And the subtle body is telling you that you're this body form and impressing on you the ideas that you're this form and you need to do such and such. And there is a birth and there's a death and you were born and all that. In truth, it's just the space in this room is contacting this lump of goo and they're speaking. But the space in this room when this lump of goo is no longer able to sustain, that's why Nizargadatta Maharaj talks about the food. This is the food for consciousness. When this is no longer feeding consciousness, the sense you are, then it's gone. Then the sense you are is gone. But yet that that was the sense you are can no longer be sensed. There's nothing separate, but is. Like sometimes I see myself in everything. It's like I, I am in and I am everything, kind of. That's because you're losing the pressure of being something. If you're seeing yourself in everything, it means you're losing the pressure of being an individual of something. Because if you believe in at all, that's why Maharaj says you can't get this. If you have a belief that you're in a body, you're not going to understand any of the speaking, whether it be from the books or from the masters themselves, you won't understand the speaking if you believe yourself to be a body because you're going from a limited identification or a limited perception and seeing out. Like the frog that's in a bucket and looking up and seeing the sky doesn't understand the world or anything like that except from the limited point of view that he is. So anything else would just be a concept that you'd have to build in kind of an illusory construct. I guess that's that's why sometimes I feel like I'm kind of understanding it intellectually, but other times, which is somewhat rare, I actually, it seems like I'm almost like fully understanding what's being said. Because it's, it's only presence to presence. The recognition of presence in that body, as in this body, recognizing itself as the same, there's a vibration, a sense of presence that grows because the sense of being in another form is being eroded by the recognition and the projection. So you said that the, the fourth body, um, the great causal body is 
the ultimate truth? Well, he was, uh, in Amrit Laya, he talks about the fourth body and uh, he, what he says about it. I think, I think what John's talking about is beyond the fourth bodies. But he says, uh, the one who perceives this oblivion or forgetfulness is the fourth body that is in the form of knowledge. So, but like, yeah, okay. Actually, I'm not the sure. Form of knowledge, the form of you are, sense of existence, presence. I think he talks about, too, about the mother who sees all the faces of all her babies and buries them, but none of those children have ever seen each other's faces. Yeah. Only the mother has seen each one of the faces. And that's why all these are illusory appearances on your spontaneous presence. And you're the witness of all of this. And yet you're that presence, that sense you are in which all of this is projected. That's why again, Maharaj says prior to being this, prior to any of the bodies. And he says before too, don't get hung up in the bodies. Forget about the bodies. I remember Maharaj would talk about, he'd say gross body, subtle body, uh, causal body. Great causal body. Now forget about the bodies. <laughs> Just like when he talks about the gunas. He says, okay, I'm going to tell you in spiritual science, this is why he always says spiritual science is that knowledge that came from books. So spiritual science says there's Raja guna, Tama guna, Sattva guna. Now forget about the gunas because that all has to do with the body. So forget about all that. Remain prior to beingness. Prior to beingness, you didn't know any gunas. Prior to beingness, you didn't know any bodies. Prior to being this, you didn't know any world. All of that came along with this sense of existence, which projected this dream world, which is then called waking world because of the identification as this is myself. For some reason, the word, the word wind really resonates with me, maybe because it's very windy out here in Arizona. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but, you know, like uh, Das Brode speaks about the wind. So you have um, the absolute, Power Brahman, and all of a sudden, this wind kicks up. And then this whole thing happens, you know, it's like... Uh, so consciousness is like the wind, isn't it? Uh, the power, the spirit, it's like the wind that just kicks up. Well, and the wind is used as an example because wind is like presence. It can be felt but not seen. Yeah. And the, the, the sense of existence is the wind, the first movement. The first movement outwards is I exist. Boom. I exist, then the wind, and then all the five elements and everything is automatically there because there's the belief in, I exist. I exist as what? This body form. The subtle body, the causal body, the great causal body, the gross body, all of these bodies are appearing on spontaneous presence. But the first is the wind, because the wind is the movement, the sense of existence, or the something in the nothing. Right. <clears throat> Just like they use interchangeably wind, light, um, Presence, of course, I am, existence. Uh, consciousness or awareness? or Consciousness, awareness, all of those things are the stirring of existence. That a, the something in a nothing. And just different labels for that. And awareness, awareness came because there's something to be aware of. Oh, awareness of presence. But awareness was just that nothing which then became aware and became awareness of something, the sense of existence. Or the light, when Nizargadatta Maharaj or Siddharmeshwar Maharaj talks about the light and how the light is the self that shines and, and this and that, that is again the sense of existence, which is the light which projects the entire show. Everything appears on spontaneous presence. The wind, the sense of existence, is the movement that creates the world. So you are the Big Bang. You are the Big Bang, yes, in a sense. But Big Bang is kind of a, an occurrence, yes, yes. 
you were like maybe the giver of the Big Bang? Well, the sense of existence spontaneously occurring could be an example of Big Bang. It's constantly being created um, moment by moment. I well, mean, remember, it's not individual. <laughs> right, right. It just create all the consciousness. This is an object in consciousness. Right. The understanding of I exist clicked, boom, projects. Yeah. And everything then that's in the projection is in the consciousness or basically in the space in this room, their objects are appearing in. The mirage, because of a sense of existence, there's the, the feeling or the this world and all the things. And, and like I said, because I'm identifying as a limited form, I see other forms, quote, outside of myself because I'm identifying with a limited body form. And then I believe, because I believe I'm separate, you must be separate. And this is impressed instantaneously because mom and dad and everything are right there. And it's like, oh, I'm somebody, you're mom. I'm somebody, you're so-and-so. And then because I believe I'm a separate somebody, I start to see the world through that limited perception of I'm someone and there are all these someones in the world. And then I start to listen to the flow of thoughts, the causal body and the subtle body that are impressing the fact that those people out there are also thinking like I'm thinking, that there's a separate thinker here and a separate thinker there. And we're all thinking that we're individuals and because I believe and think that I'm having these thoughts, I'm automatically assuming that these other forms are having these thoughts. And then you start to interact as separate forms in the formlessness that you are. That's how the trance works. Basically, yeah. You're putting yourself to sleep, rocking yourself slowly to sleep with paying attention to the thoughts. And the thoughts are coming and flowing and you're just jumping in the river <laughs> <laughs> and enjoying the ride. But not outside of it, really totally into it until you start to see, see the whole thing is kind of set up. So you're going to see that nothing's really working out the way my mind is telling me it does. And the more this happens, quote, tragedies in life or different various things, the mind can no longer say, oh, this is how things, you know, you start to see the differences between what my mind says is happening and what's actually occurring. And then that's where it starts that you catch from behind yourself for the first time. You catch this inconsistency. And that leads you to wonder, well, there has to be something more. There has to be something. And then you start to investigate yourself. And as you're investigating yourself in this limited body form, then you start to understand these different concepts and impress intellectually the understanding as you get to know yourself more and more and more, most likely a guru, a teacher or something, books come into your existence and you start to sense that sense of presence. And that sense of presence starts to really investigate rather than you, the human being, investigating the sense of presence. The sense of presence begins to investigate what is this on me and it is not needed. And then you go to a guru and the guru tells you, listen, you are not body, you were not body, you're not going to remain the body. So after you've known yourself as this sense of presence, after you've meditated and you felt that sense of presence, then you know you are not body, you were not body, you're not going to remain the body. Well, the body is the only thing, like Maharaj says, the bathroom and the ashram, the only thing that's separating you from everything is this body form. So if you are not body, you were not body, you're not going to remain the body, and yet you can sense this sense of presence, then presence is all there is.
And the way to stay with uh, prior to consciousness is simply doing the mantra. And also, I guess, reading and, you know, like um, churning the knowledge, you know, as they say, uh, churning it like a cow churns <laughs> the cud or whatever. It's just turning it over, over and over and over and over again. Uh, meditating, um, using the mantra, the bhajans, uh, and so forth. Because, you know, staying with prior to consciousness or beingness is, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's like, uh, there's no wind there, is there? <laughs> no, and that's why yeah. and you're the observation, <laughs> you're observing the wind. Yeah. When you're prior to consciousness, prior yeah. to beingness, yeah. your eyes are on the prize of presence. That's yeah. it. That's the only thing in your view. Yeah. You're looking out the window of presence and seeing the world, but through the lens of presence. I am not body. I was not body. I'm not going to remain the body. Remaining with the I am, a sense of existence, the sense of presence on which all of this arises. I'm prior to being this because I'm witnessing this beingness, this sense of existence, this sense of presence. Right. <clears throat> I think sometimes we like a good wind. <laughs> As long as it blows our way. <laughs> well, and the, the meditation, you start to feel the wind. Mm -hmm. If you walk outside, and you, you, look, from this window, I can't tell if it's windy or not, unless I look at some object that's how, how the wind is affecting it. So I go outside, I feel the wind, just like in meditation, I start to feel the sense of presence. When I'm reading, when Maharaj says, read the reader, it's because the recognition and the projection and the growing sense of presence. When I say growing sense of presence, it's because there's still a belief of a body form that's reading and that it's not just recognition to recognition. There's something that I'm doing that's allowing this sense of presence to be felt. After the sense of presence is the only thing you're looking at, then the impressions that are body, mind, ego, and intellect are no longer there. And mantra allows you to clear away all the illusory layers or, as we're speaking, the presence window that's covered with dirt and grime. The mantra is erasing, 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 so that all you're seeing is presence. And you say, oh, the world is appearing on presence. And I'm interested only in presence. And see, it's not like that's like, it's not like somebody's telling you something to do something that's foreign to you. Being Andrew is foreign to you. So... When you're erasing this sense of Andrew by remaining with presence, you're impressing the reality and allowing the illusory layers to just dissolve. And because that's the truth, it's not like Andrew says, well, when I'm the sense of presence, how are my daily affairs going to be managed? But see, presence impresses in the moment that I am not body, I was not body, I'm not going to remain body without saying the spontaneous conviction, eyes on the prize of presence, and still able to move about in the world. But like this, the only layer between you and the world is the sense of I exist. And I don't exist as a body, I just exist. That's when Maharaj talks about the feeling first in the morning, just I, just I, I without anything, is the sense of existence when you're just paying attention to that sense of existence, the sense of presence. Everything else is appearing on presence. So do as you wish, do as you like, but remain knowing. I am not body, I was not body, I'm not going to remain body. All this is appearing on presence. Bhajans are there to help vibrations. While I'm still feeling myself as a body form, I'll feel a sense that the body is dissolving or expanding through the, the vibrations that the bhajans are because I'm paying attention more to the presence and the bhajan is giving that. When I'm reading and I read I am that or master of self-realization, I'm not so much reading the words intellectually using mind. I'm using presence is reading presence. There's a recognition in the projection, and that's really what I'm pulling. That's why at <laughs> night, if you read just one or two chapters, it's good. You're remaining with yourself with self, remaining with presence. Not so good to sit down and think, oh, what is this? Chewing of the cud is remaining with the sense of presence only. I start to feel it, even the size of a dime. 
and I remain with it. How do I remain with it? Listening to the knowledge, reading the books, bhajan, mantra, and just remaining with the sense of presence until there is no one remaining with the sense of presence because it's just that presence. And this someone that was investigating, the investigator disappears. The Maharaj says this. The reader disappears, the listener, I guess. Absolutely. <clears throat> the invisible listener. That's what Maharaj always says. Invisible, anonymous, unidentified identity. That you are. That you are. When they speak about that you are, that's the sense of presence. That you are. Or I am. The sense of existence, the sense of presence, the wind, the light, all these different things are pointing always to the same thing prior to beingness. Now there's a sense of presence. I exist. Don't go any further. No need to. I exist. I exist formlessly in this form world for a time. I will always exist. I just won't know my existence because there'll be nothing that I am using to know. I use the body form as a sense of existence, knowing this sense of existence, but there had to be existence in order to click with the body. Otherwise, like when you're sleeping and there's a continuum, something wakes you up. If there was nothing there that woke you up, you would never wake up. But you are always there as the background. And what you were speaking about earlier, how you get upset, it's quite okay. There's a wave on the ocean, but the wave comes up, wave comes down. Mostly it's the background. And the deeper you go in the ocean, the more there's no movement at all. The more you're on the surface, there'll be some waves. You get deeper, no waves, no movement. But it's quite all right. Ebbing and flowing. We talked about last week about the, 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 the heart. Yeah. yeah. So... Just rising and setting, picking up the water, drinking it, putting it down. No thoughts about it, no worries about it, no further need to think about or even see it. You know, you're not picking up the water, drinking it, and then mentally sitting there, okay, now it's down my throat, and it goes down, and then it's going down into this organ, and it comes around this way, and now it's being processed here, and then it, you don't think about all that. You drink it and forget. <laughs> That's a lot of carrying around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of excess mentations. <laughs> yeah, very much so. <laughs> any, any of the natural body functions that are functioning, breathing, if you had to sit there and say, okay, I'm breathing in, and where is the air going, and how is the lungs filling, and then the lungs have the little air pockets, and they're filling. No, it's just I breathe in, I breathe out. But for some reason, there's this sense that this outside, so to speak, needs to be thought about. Oh, what to do? <laughs> yeah, the people who spend their lives uh, dissecting dinosaur bones. Well, I mean, that's something they, yeah. You, if you're a, an archaeologist, you go out to an archaeological dig, that's your thing. That's kind of your role. And you play your role to the fullest. Yeah. <laughs> Not there's anything wrong with it. It's just, uh, it just seems a little bit, uh, I don't know, extreme. No, but every, every kind of, in, in this illusory world, there's so many different roles, just like in the orchestra, there's so many different instruments, and they all come together to play the music. If you were missing some of the instruments or some of the different things, it would not be the same. There's a perfect harmony. Right, yeah. It would be a different universe if one thing was different because it's all connected. Well, it's all just in it. All, everything is occurring in the dream, the yeah. consciousness. And all that you see, all you've ever done, everything that is going on is in that consciousness, in that dream. And when that dreamer wakes up, meaning leaves this world, this body form, then it's finished. And it never was. Like, that's why. The egoistic sense of self has a hard time saying, well, you mean John didn't matter at all? Well, John was an illusory character. <laughs> he never was. 
There's not a John that's losing John. John was an illusory character in the dream, and now the dreamer has woke up. What happened to John? Who knows? There was no John. It's kind of like an end, the end of a song. <clears throat> exactly. Where did the song go? What, you know, the last note is played. Did the song die? No, it just, this let's finished. <laughs> <laughs> Never was really uh, a thing per se in the first place. I think. Was... Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the final holding on when you're believing yourself to be somebody separate. That's one of the things that Maharaj says, you have to have courage because the courage, the lack of courage is, uh-oh, so I never was. That means like, I'm not, but I'm here. So when I die, then what happens? No, no, but you never were. <laughs> you're never alive. You are that in which this illusory world has appeared. You will always be here, whether illusory world is here or not. But there's no John, no specifics, no what John did or does or anything. It's nothing like this. So enjoy the body form while you can in the dream without worry, without troubles, without, you know, like Maharaj says, tension-free life, peaceful life, uh, happy life, and, and then share with others. Hey, guess what? You don't have to be worried and wrapped up about all this stuff and get your blood pressure all up and lose this body form while you have this body form. Be happy. Be joyous. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> yeah, you hear that, Trish? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, it used to be something that went around and said, be happy, be happy, be happy. I oh, can't... no, that was uh, <laughs> Tommy McFerrin. It was, yeah, uh, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Be happy. <laughs> it, was a, it was a song. Don't <laughs> Worry, Be Happy. Or then yeah, the yeah. other one where it was like, I'm happy. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> Just be happy. Why you're here, enjoy. Knowing that you never were here. Forget about the achy, breaky heart. Not, nothing's important. Nothing is bothering. You're untouched by the world. The world is just a passing thing, a show. Enjoy. Yeah, there's a, a writer that called life a parenthesis in eternity. There's like open paren, the guy gets born, closed paren, dies, goes back to the eternity. Yeah, that, that's Paulo Coelho, actually, the Brazilian writer. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I use that quote in some of the ceremonies that I do. It's <laughs> 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 really good. He said, you know, like, uh, we are eternal, but there's, there's a brief par uh, parenthesis in time in, in this eternity, and we're yeah. here to do whatever we're going to do. You basically know, think, to love and so forth and so forth you know so. i think it goes back to joel goldsmith you know he was a uh, christian mystic and i think he was the one I, I have a i have that book it's called it's called that that's the title of the book maybe uh, it could be that paulo Coelho took it from goldsmith <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> who knows <laughs> anyway just, mary's just remember there's no birth and no death yeah because there's only belief in a body form. The form is born and dies. You do not ever be born, do not ever die. Time is born because of the belief in being a body. Yeah, time is a creature, it's a construct. Well, time comes along with an object in time. When you identify yourself as an object in the space, then you create the sense of time because now you're an object in space that time is, is born, basically. For the length of time that you're believing yourself or that you're seeing yourself or perceiving yourself as an object in space. Once you know that you're the space, then time is, this space in the room is not affected by time. It's outside of time, basically, prior to time. Yeah. Um, I see Mary has her hand raised. Uh, I don't know if she's trying to. to oh, really? See. Yeah, there's a little blue hand that goes up and I don't, oh, know really? wants, I don't know if she wants to say something. I didn't know that. Lower is, hand. Is she on video or? But I saw her microphone blanked out. Though. <clears throat> there's, uh, there's eight people here right now. Right. One of them is Mary and is she, there's a little no hand there. I don't know whether that means she wants to talk or, or what. I don't see any little hand. But Mary, if you want to speak, speak. 
Reading the blue thing with three dots. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a hand raising? Yeah, that's another thing Zoom has. If you want to speak, oh, she just put it down. Put it down? <laughs> well, actually, I see, I see the same thing on Sandra's and everybody else, too, though. If I, if I, yeah, if I mouse over it, then the three little blue dots will yeah. come up. Oh, the three dots are a way of you press on those and the person, you get a whole menu of things. Yeah, it says chat or pin video. Pin video means that that person then becomes larger. See, uh -huh. I can see Mary's now on the screen. Not Mary, but Sandra. Uh -huh. Very fascinating. I know this is, <laughs> I don't know everything about Zoom. I just, you know, it's an <laughs> ongoing thing. <laughs> Indeed. Anyway, uh, have we covered everything? Good I have a I have a question, uh, but we can wait, wait wait till next week. It's been on my mind for a long time. No, what, no, what's the well, go ahead. If it's on your mind now, go ahead. No, 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 it's just you know, like when Jesus says the Father and I are one. How do you how do you interpret that? Um, I mean, f first of all, when you know, like in the Gospels, for instance, there's a lot of stuff in the Gospels that I don't think Jesus really said. I mean, because that was like a person's interpretation of That's what, what he said. Um, so basically, and the, the, I guess the gospel that I most trust would be John's gospel because I think, uh, you know, he had a longer time to develop, to, to do that actually. I mean, he was a very old man. I think when he compiled that gospel, it was a long time afterwards. So he probably grew a great deal. So a lot of maybe, his understanding of who Jesus was, was is presented in John's gospel. I don't know. Yeah, well, when, what you just said, I and the Father are one, is Jesus's recognition that he is not. Right. He's not separate. Exactly. Right. And see, that's why a lot of the Bible and these other different various religions, when God, or so to speak, selfless self, speaks through the form like Maharaj has said, you will not understand anything that's being said if you're identifying yourself with a body. Well, any listeners that are identifying themselves as a body with what someone is saying from the bodiless state, from the formless state, will be interpreted from a body form and be written down perceiving that you are a body who's speaking to me. Jesus says, I am the Father are one because Jesus is not, and there's the recognition of this. There is only God. There is no Jesus. Jesus as a separate individual is just an illusory character, just as John or Andrew or any of these, because there's a recognition there. Just like Maharaj recognized he is not Maharaj. He is selfless self, presence. And Jesus recognized he, all the things that he says, even how he talks about on the cross about uh, you know, you'll be in my Father's kingdom. But Father's kingdom is you'll be with your selfless self. You'll be back to the nothing. The something will be dissolved for you, and you'll be back to your true state. What is heaven? Heaven is recognizing this while you're still in body form, which St. Uh, Paul talks about. And when St. Paul had the conversion from Saul to Paul, that's the sense of presence that's being overwhelming, and Paul understands that he never was Saul. These are the things, but see, when they're speaking like this, and that's why Jesus says, the spirit I will give to you, and that spirit will teach you everything you need to know. And as Argadatta Maharaj says, the sense of presence, remain with the I am, and the I am will teach you everything you need to know. Right, yeah. Jesus' disciples and followers were overwhelmed with the Holy Spirit, which he pointed out to them what this is. Now, go and preach this. Go and preach this is like when Siddharameshwar Maharaj says, when this knowledge has arisen, place your carpet and begin speaking. And Jesus tells his followers to go out and spread the good news. But then the human people, belief in a limited body form, listen to the good news through the limited perception of being a person, that's receiving the good news from a person, and not that this person is actually the formlessness that you are, speaking directly to that formlessness that you are in this form. 
Right. When you read the Bible after you read it from the sense of presence, recognition, and the projection, and you'll see that it's absolutely the, the things that are said, those are the same exact. Everything is exact. It's yeah. just then that the different various guys, different various individuals believing themselves, not individuals because it's still presence, but believing themselves as the presence speaking, you hear somebody speaking the Sermon on the Mount and you write down what was spoken. But you can't comprehend that it's, and then you say, oh, this is God speaking. Okay, yes, but you believe Jesus is God rather than God is. There is no you, there is no Jesus, there is no world, there is no nothing. There's God. God has been labeled Brahman, Atman, Paramatman, God, that you are. And accept your selfless self. There is no God, no Brahman, no Paramatman, no Master. Nothing is separate from that sense of presence that you are, from presence, from you are. There's nothing. Right. <clears throat> Everything that's appearing on presence is absolutely illusion. So yes, I and the Father are one. And even in the parts of the Bible where it talks about Jesus saying that he's the Son of God or the Son of Man or something like this, and people, how dare you say that? Because they stoned him or tried to stone him. Because he was saying, but you know, I'm God, you understand, but not in that way of, hey guys, I'm God. No, it's all are God. But the limited understanding gets angry. And Nizargadatta Maharaj talks about too, uh, I forget which book it is, that he says, if I go and preach what I'm talking to you, to the masses, they're just <laughs> like Jesus did. He told the truth and they crucified him. All right. They might come and burn my house to the ground. That's why I'm giving this limited knowledge to you. And when I go out to the masses, I speak about God and devotion and bhajan. Because religion is the stepping stone. It's, it's to get to presence. Right, yeah. Robert Maharshi says that uh, very clearly in his talks, actually, about religion as a stepping stone. Um, Yes, yes. That's good, yeah. Because, uh, you know, like looking at St. Paul, I mean, I, I, haven't, I haven't read anything, uh, you know, like, gee, in so long. But, I mean, there, I know that he says, for instance, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, you know. Yes, yes. That whole, you know, basically, it's just that annihilation of, you know, like, it's the adopting of the master, and then probably beyond that, uh, you know, selfless self. Yeah, Christ is the selfless self that now lives in me. I no longer live. Right. See, that's probably why Christianity had to do the trinity of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, because all these guys were interpreting it based on being a limited individual, and yet none of those things actually fit into what was being said. So when they said, oh, Christ, Christ is that man who was crucified. No, Christ is another word for I exist, for selfless self, for consciousness. Right. That you are. Yeah, they say Jesus Christ, like Christ was his last name, instead of Jesus, the Christ is one. <laughs> exactly. To be the yeah, Christ. Yeah, what's your last name? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's amazing. It's like the game of telephone, you know? <laughs> it goes down through the years, and it gets completely, uh, whatever the original message gets lost. Exactly. Yeah. Because again, and as Maharaj has said, if you have the belief that you are a separate body, you will not understand when someone says, oh yeah, accept your selfless self, there's no God, there's no Brahman, there's no Paramatman, there's no Master. Egoistically, you say, ah, accept my selfless self, my selfless self, not your selfless self, <laughs> your selfless self. my selfless self. I have the ownership by using yeah. mine. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, John. You might have spent too much time on Capitol Hill, or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's self to self, and that's why the dream is the perfect analogy. You lay down at sleep, an entire dream world is projected. When the sense of existence touches in the dream state, boom, a dream world is projected. All of those images, all of those forms in your consciousness, dream consciousness are that. And you're sleeping. 
and everything's being projected, including the body that you're seeing yourself using inside this dream. And all the separate people, excuse me, you may be carrying on conversations with separate people inside the dream, but again, it's all arising from you. And if there was a Jesus in your dream that says, I and the Father are one and this sort of thing, it's coming from you, the source. That is all there is. Except that selfless self, there is no God, no Brahman, no Paramatma, no Master. You are not body, you were not body, you're not going to remain the body. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. Good, good, good. Thank okay. you, everyone. Hey, Thank you very Kelly much. Wants, Thank you. Kelly wants to say hello. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. You've been here the whole time. Hello, hello. <laughs> and, and, the, and the cat is gone, too. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And just like Siddhartha Maheshwar Maharaj says, the way you worship God in the form of the cat is not bowing and all that. Cat wants milk. Cat wants food. Uh, cleaning litter box. This sort of thing is the way you worship cat. As well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. You heard the whole thing. All right. Well.